Right, okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is highlight um, before and afters on my refurb. So, so basically I've got a PS3 which you can see I'm testing right now and I run Webman to check the fan speeds basically. And uh, yeah, well, fan te well the temperatures are running at 40% fan. So this is a GO3 and a resourceful game I would run at 40%. Um, and the GPUs are, sorry, the CPUs at 68 degrees and the RSX is at 65 degrees. So let's do the refurbishment. Or in, or basically, you'll see me do parts of it and then we'll put it back together and see what we get. All right, see you then. Right, so the first thing I'll be looking to do, just need to get in front of this. So you can see it. Right, okay. So we are going to be looking to do a remounting on the drive. Um, because the drive doesn't work. So I've got the replacement drive here. Um, this is what we're going to be replacing it with. So I'm just going to pause the video while I get this onto the correct firmware for us to do the drive swap and go into factory service mode. So I'll see you in a bit. Right, so at this stage, um, just to let you know, we're going to remarry the drive. But to do that, we've got to get it on uh, lower firmware, rebog firmware. So we toggle QA flags, um, and now we are in the process of just copying over rebug to the hard drive, which it's doing now, and then it will then start to do the update. I'll just let you see that. <clears throat> there it is, just checking the update data. QA flags now enabled, so it should just go through. There it is, it's starting the, um, shall we say, downgrade process of the firmware. So I'll, call, I'll basically um, leave it there for the moment and I'll see you when we're in rebug and I'll show you the steps we know. Right, okay, so we are now in rebug. Um, I can now delete the flag, QA flags. Um, we're just going to package manager and going to PS3 system storage to install the rebug toolbox and then from here we enter rebug now if your drive it doesn't read at all you can get no BD software which means you don't need a drive to run custom firmware because if you don't have a drive working custom firmware normally wouldn't run so we enable QA flags Dump the ID root key and we say yes. As you can see it reboots. And now we're we'll into multi man. And I'll show you what to do from here. So you want to go into File Manager. Go over to PS3 root. Go to HDD0. Go to game or lower case. Go into RBGTL box 2, which is rebug toolbox. Go into user directory. And then the EID root key is this one with the question mark. It's the first one you come to that says EID. You press 0, you press X to copy. Once it's copied to clipboard, you then go back into your root. Go to your USB, so make sure you have your USB plugged in. 
and then just paste it in. Now you can come out of this. Double click on game and come across to turn off the system. Here, turn it off at the main so you don't want no red light, you want nothing coming on. Unclip this. So with the new drive installed, we now need to go to custom firmware tools, service tools, advanced service tools, and then toggle factory service mode. I'll just kind of get closer to the screen for you. It does take a little while, just going to a reboot. Now we we'll get a lower resolution. And eventually it comes up. From here we go to Network, Custom Firmware Tools, Service Tools, Advanced Service Tools and now Remarry Blu-ray Drive. Make sure there's nothing in there before you do it. As you can see, Sex Drive in it succeeded. Now we go to Toggle Factory Service Mode, which means it will take us back to normal XMB. Right, so we're now back to our normal main menu. Pop in a desk. Right, so Call of Duty Black Ops 2 has come up, we'll just make sure it plays.
Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So from here I would run a wet and dry clean um, laser disc cleaner through it. Um, uh, just to make sure that the laser is clean. Um, if through testing I got any glitches, that would basically mean the laser would need a proper clean, um, which means me opening up the, the actual drive unit. Um, but on this occasion it looks fine. And yeah, that's all good. It's running the game fine, so I'm just going to quit out of that. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video now, and now we're going to get down to the motherboard for refurbishment. When I get there, I'll see you then. Right, okay, so we're down to the motherboard, and yeah, we've got these original um, pads here, which are pretty useless. Well, they're useless now, because the console is so old. Um, it's over 12 years old, 12 to 15 years old, all this this console is. So, um, once we've got this file, there was a lot of dust here. I've obviously brushed away with a fine brush. Just need to remove um, this clip here. And then you have to be really careful when separating these plates because these consoles, um, if you basically put too much force on separating the plates, then, um, yeah you can actually pull away the CPU or the GPU from the substrate and that will give you a green light there. So, has it happened to me? Yes, it has. You learn from your mistakes and now obviously we're very, very careful. So what we have here is um, original paste. Excuse the state of my hands. Um, this console had black marker on it. I don't know why. Um, Anyway, I think their pen leaks or something went on the back of the console. Anyway, it's all, be, it's all going to be washed away. It's going to look like new. Anyway, um, at this stage, I'll be cleaning up, um, removing pads, putting new pads on. So um, I'm not going to bore you with the cleaning process. I'm going to pause it for now. And then when I get to it, I'll uh, reconvene. See you in a bit. Right, so just continuing on. Um, now we have got to the motherboard and we've given it a good dusting and a good clean. We've wiped, over, we've wiped the surfaces down with some alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. Um, and then from here, um, we're going to delid this RSX. Now I'm not going to do it on camera, there's plenty of tutorials on how to actually do it. But what you can do is you, if you get a bit of heat proof tape and put it in there, okay then you would heat this area up you can use a reflow work sorry a, re a rework station like myself um or you can use a hair dryer on the on the max heat it up for about a minute going around the surfaces here because these are the chips with the glue and you just put in a small prying tool so you could use something like a butter knife or something like that or you can buy a prying tool and then you would just lift it up and as you can see there so put that on that for you. Then this exposes this actual area here. Um, so I'm going to give this a clean up and um, and then I'll show you what the next stage is. So back in a moment. Right, so as you can see, um, we've cleared the paste off of this. Um, you will be left with um, something like this that you'll need to clean up as well. Um, I've got one I've prepared earlier. <laughs> always have a spare because I like to spend time on these, I don't like to rush them. So if I'm watching the TV I just like to gradually grind away at the um, the hardened paste that's on there which is like paste glue. Uh, it's really difficult to get off. Um, it's the same on these round chips, you can just use a um, razor blade or you can use just something to scrape away but as long as you're careful. Um, you can mask up these if you want these traces. Um, you can use tape like I showed you earlier. Um, yeah, so like heat proof tape to mask over these areas here. All right. Um, so yes, so I'm just going to um, now put some foil tape onto these. Um, I don't know anybody else that does this. Um, and then I'm going to put new pads throughout. So I'm just going to pause it. Um, I'll put the tape on and then I'm going to show you what I've done and um, all the steps that you need to do. All right. 
Right, so we're on to the next step, and uh, yeah, so basically um, we have got the um, plate for the graphics chip, this is the heat spreader, we've spread um, paste finely on it, then what we do is we just put a little blob in the middle, now we're going to fix this. here like so right so you should be left with something that's looking like this okay um, <clears throat> you may feel it move around but you can put pressure on it and it will because it's thermal paste it has some adhesion and it will eventually stick. All right. <clears throat> so we come over to the board, and as you can see now, we've got thermal paste here and here. Um, and again, we will put a little blob in the middle. And if you spread out evenly on this chip, we still put a blob in the middle like this. <clears throat> what you'll also notice is I've now got foil, it's like insulation foil on the uh, capacitors. That's basically this you can buy it from a hardware store. It's self adhesive, so it's tape, it's in, and it's basically reflective heat tape. Um, and what we're looking to do is reflect the heat from there onto the pads through to the case. Um, to get better heat distribution so um, these are all pre-cut to size two millimeter um, thermal pads so we're just going to put these on two of them lengthways is just slightly longer than the token which is fine doesn't matter if it's a bit, bit, bit too big So we have this old thermal pad here, we're going to replace that as well. See a lot of people not replacing all of the pads. That's a brand new pad. I'm just going to remove cellophane. You may find when you're doing it that you've got a little bit of paste, this paste, just even though I've wiped the board down with alcohol, it just seems to reappear. Because it's slightly sticky and hides in corners. Right, so on this side, this is what you want to be looking at. So let's have a good look at this. So, foil on the, um, well, it's a heat reflective tape foil that's been stuck on there, self-adhesive. Then you've got the pads on top. Then you've got the pad 